good morning class 8 welcome to our daily lesson and uh, we are moving on to class 7 uh, the human body class 7 for class 6 i will combine it with class 8 because the topic they are more related so in talk about production class 6 i shall combine it with uh, crypto development in class 8 so here in class 7 we are going to look at the blood circulation and that is the secretary thing System. Cycle system, big as system, that means has got parts, parts. This thing has got three parts. Number one, you can talk about the blood components. Number two, you can talk about the blood vessels. These are the parts of the system. Blood vessels, I'm sorry. Red vessels, then number three, you have the, the heart. These are the parts of the circulatory system. So we want to discuss each, and to start with, I'll have to move on to the first part. The first part is blood components. We need to look at the components of the blood. Blood components. How many components do we have? Blood has got how many components? Blood has got three components. Namely, number one, we do have the blood plasma. Number two, we do have what we call the red blood cells. Number three, we have white. Blood cells, and then lastly, we have the platelets. The platelets they are only for blood components. So, to start with, I want to get through blood plasma. This is the first one. What is blood plasma? Blood plasma, we say, is the largest blood component. Is bigger than the three, than all of them, the largest blood component. Plasma again, you say that most of it, most of plasma is made of water. Most of it is water. And again, you say plasma has good all other components. The three of them suspended in plasma. Other components, this is the red bloody cells, white bloody cells, and the platelet. are suspended in plasma. Plasma we are saying is the lightest, it's the biggest, it's bigger than any other component. And we are saying that most of it is water, around 92% of plasma is water. Then we are saying that other blood components are found in plasma. In plasma, carries other components. Let's look at the function of plasma. What is the function of plasma? What role do plasma play in the body? Number one, plasma transport foods. It will transport digested food in short or just food to digest. Number two, you say plasma transport Hormones. What are hormones? We are going to discuss about hormones in form 3 for those who take biology. But here, in primary, I'll define hormones as body chemicals. These are the body chemicals that trigger functioning of our body or how we respond to the situation. The response mostly is triggered or will bring about by the hormone. These are the chemicals that send some communication in our body. Then you have another function of plasma. Plasma helps to circulate or 
is to do things from the liver to all parts of the body. Lastly, plasma helps to transport waste product. Waste product. The example of this waste product, we talked about them in class 8, under excretion, waste we have carbon dioxide. Example of this waste transported by glass man, talking about the glass egg work, we have the carbon dioxide, we have waste product, let's have them here. We have carbon dioxide. We have salt, excess salt, we have excess water, we have urea, we have sweat, we have lactic acid, and uh, the list goes. That's an example of waste products that are in the body and mostly transported by the blood plasma. Having talked about plasma, we need to move on to the second part of blood component. This was number one. Number two we have red blood cells. Red blood cell is another component that we need to look at it. Red blood cell we say is made in red bone marrow. Red blood cell says made in red bone marrow. Then we say it is. Regular. When I say regular, that means that it has got shape. And it takes shape of a disc. It appears like a disc. Red blood is said, there are many in number. Then, W, D, S. Then we say, when I talk about the number that are many compared to white blood cell, and when I talk about the size, when I talk about the size, we say that smaller in size that's smaller in size than WBS. WBS, they are a bit bigger in size, but this one they are very small in size. And then we say red blood cells have got a very crucial part. They have the, a very crucial organ, which you are calling they have hemoglobin. They have hemoglobin, they contain hemoglobin. What is the function of hemoglobin? Hemoglobin helps to give blood it is red color. Hemoglobin gives blood its red color, or hemoglobin you can say it is a, a red coloring pigment found in the blood. Again, hemoglobin has got another function. Now, this is a very crucial that will help to give these components their function.
Hemoglobin yung instead gives red, red color and again you say hemoglobin combines with It combined with oil. It has good attractive power. It has good attractive power, or at times in science you may call it affinity. It has good high affinity to combine or attract oxygen in the blood. Once you inhale, once you take in oxygen, oxygen, like what we discussed yesterday, it will go in the air sacs and then they fuse in the blood. Then once in the blood, oxygen will combine with high more globin. And that will make it easier now. For red blood cell to carry this oxygen across the body to take it to various parts of the body. And this also explains when I talk about combining power or ability to attract oxygen, it has got ability to attract oxygen when you inhale oxygen. But when you inhale a poisonous gas known as carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, I'm sorry, when you inhale this gas, this gas attracts easily with hemoglobin faster than oxygen. And when the two combine together, they form something in chemistry that we call a stable compound. Stable compound, what do I mean? I mean that once the two combine, they build something that will not break easily. And if that thing does not break easily, that means that hemoglobin will not be able to combine with oxygen. Hence, you are going to lack oxygen. And if you are going to lack oxygen, one to what? One to okay? Now, having talked about that, we need to finish up red blood cell by looking at its function. What is the function of the red blood cell? The function of red, red blood cell is just transport of the But before that, the gas needs to combine with hemoglobin. Then from there, it will be carried to various parts of the body. Thirdly, we have what we call the white blood cells. White blood cell or WBS. What are the white blood cells? White blood cells you say they are made in yellow bone marrow, but I want not to focus so much on it. Uh, white blood cell. They have no shape. They have no, no shape. And if they don't have shape, we call them what? We call them irregular. So white blood is said you can say they are irregular in shape. Now let's compare white blood cell and red blood cell. We say red blood cell there are many in number. This one they be. They are few. They are few in number compared to red blood cell. The red blood cell we say they are small in size. That means that white blood cells are B, B. They are bigger than red blood cell, RBC. When I talk about the physical size, you discover that this one they are a bit bigger, they are a bit bigger in size than red blood But again, we are saying that the biggest of all, the biggest of all of, all of them is the first one, the pl plasma. Then in this case, it will be followed by white blood So we don't talk about the physical size. Then from there, we go to red blood cells. They are bigger than red blood cells. And again, they have nucleus. They have nucleus. Nuclear is a central part. We found this is a white blood cell, no shape like this. Then we have something here in, at the center. This is what we call the nucleus. Lastly, we have the last component. The fourth one, that is called the platelet. What do you have to say about the platelet? 
Now, lastly, if I go to platelet, I need to mention the function of white blood cell. What is the function of white blood cell? Functions of the white blood cell. What role do white blood cell play in the body? White blood cell does fight germs. Fight germs in the body. There are body soldiers. They prevent body from diseases. And in short, what let us say, we can call them immune system. Then, having talked about that, we go to the last one, the fourth one, which is called the platelets. Platelets are the smallest components. These are the smallest blood components. What are the function of platelets? Platelets work hand in hand with other components or other food nutrients that is vitamin K and calcium to do what? To prevent excessive bleeding by causing clotting of the blood. Blood clotting. If the question is about the blood component that helps blood clotting, then that will be blood clotting. But if the question is on mineral, the mineral helps in blood clotting, then the answer will be calcium. Calcium is a mineral. If the question is about the vitamin, then the answer will be vitamin K. Having talked about the blood components, we need to move on to another part of the blood circulation. Blood circulation, I say, is a component, is a system that has got three parts. The first part of that is first, the blood components. Second part, we have the blood vessels. Blood vessels. What are the blood vessels? Blood vessels, these are the pipes. These are the pipes on our body that allow blood to flow through them. Remember, blood in the body flows through the pipes. Blood does not flow outside the pipe. If the blood flows outside the pipe, that will be the bleeding. Bleeding, remember, can be internal or external. Once blood flows outside the vessel, that's bleeding. So vessels, these are the pipes. There are three types of blood vessels. Number one, we have arteries. Number two, we have veins. Then last two, we have capillaries. To start with, I'll take you through the first one, arteries. What are arteries? For me to explain artery, I need to sketch it first so that you have a picture. This is, I say there are pipes. These are pipes. Arteries. So when I describe the artery number one, you say they have thick walls. They have thick The thickness between the outer layer, the thickness of this outer part to the space inside that allow it to flow through it. That's what we're calling. For example, this is a pipe. 
So when I'm talking about the when I'm talking about the walls, I'm referring to the thickness from here to here. This is the thickness. So in that array, this part is a bit thick. Now I'm saying the half thick wall. Then inside we have a hole that allows liquid to throw, to pass through them, like this one here. In arteries, this opening, this hole is a bit narrow. So they have thick walls and they have narrow lumen. They don't have They don't have valves. What are the valves? Valves prevent the flow, back flow of the blood. Artery are located deep in the body. They are deep there in our body then we say all arteries all of them they carry blood away from the heart artery also carry blood flowing under high pressure they carry blood under high pressure examples of arteries here in primary level we have only three we have only two, I'm sorry. Then as we move on, we will discuss about the type of arteries. Here we have examples of arteries. Number one, we have aorta. Then we have Okay. To start with, we have aorta. We describe aorta as the main artery. Aorta is the main artery. Did you say aorta is carry? Blood from from the heart to all parts of the body. Which type of blood is carried by outer? The blood being carried to all parts of the body need to be. Good blood, blood needed in the body. This is oxygenated blood. And being an artery, and being an artery that supplies blood to all body, all body parts, you would cut blood under the highest. Pressure. Remember, all arteries carry blood under high pressure, but this one carry blood under the highest pressure because pumping blood to various parts of the body. Remember, here we have the heart. The heart is here, not on the left, the heart is here in between. It's the way it somehow tilted towards the left, but the heart is here. So, here this blood is being pumped by aorta to all parts of the body. Look how continuing we have legs. The heads, you remember, these are very far apart, need to be strong enough. And the blood needs to be under high pressure to reach those body parts.
Last part on arteries. Would you have the last part of artery that is pulmonary artery? The pulmonary artery. It carry blood from heart. All other member carry blood from the heart. Carry blood from heart to the lungs. Why to the lungs? Because this blood has got no oxygen. The blood has no oxygen. The blood is like the lungs to take oxygen. Hence, carbon dioxide present in the blood. It is removed all excess in the lungs. Remember, excess of gases in the body takes place only in the lungs. It carries blood without oxygen, that is deoxygenated. That is deoxygenated blood. And uh, it is the only artery that will carry the oxygenated blood. Then, having talked about that, we go to veins. As the blood vessel, remember I said blood vessel, there are three. We have arteries, veins, and then capillaries. Artery, you have talked about the artery, and I have given an example of artery we have. Aorta, pulmonary artery, then you have to vein. Vein to start with, we need to sketch a vein. So I have a picture of what are the veins. But remember, veins are just pipes, just like arteries. This is a pipe. Just set them. We say they have ten ones. They have white lumen. What we about at said their pipes like the one I'm holding here is a big thing, and then they open here is a big white to allow blood to pass them. To pass through them easily, and they have they have valves. Why they have valves? They have valves because blood in them flow under low pressure. Hence, they need valves to ensure that this blood does not flow backward. Blood flow is them under low pressure, and that's where they have valves. What are the functions of the valve? Valves prevent blood from flowing backwards. Remember, blood needs to flow only in one direction. And this can be explained to you, class 8 boys and class 8 girls. When you go to help yourself to eat yourself shortcuts, at time you discover that you release the urine under high pressure. 
when urine flows under high pressure, it flows smoothly in one direction. But if the urine flows under low pressure, it doesn't flow smoothly. And that also happens to water in the pipes. When water is flowing under high pressure, it flows in one direction smoothly. It won't flow upward. But if the water is flowing under low pressure and it tends to tilt the pipe slightly, this water will flow upward. And that's why veins they have but to ensure that that blood does not flow backward. The blood needs to flow only in one direction, forward, no backwards. They carry blood away from the heart. They carry blood to the heart, I'm sorry. They carry blood to the heart. Examples of veins. Example of veins I've got mentioned through here. This level, and you stick like a stick to what we are giving you. You have books, different books, they have given you different information, but what we are giving you is what required at your level. Step number one, you have an uncover. Number two, we have hormonal veins. Benakava and Roman and Ben. We start with Benakava. Benakava is the main. It's the main thing. Benakava carries blood from all body parts. It collects blood all over the body and then it brings this blood to the heart. It carries the oxygen blood. It carries blood without oxygen. That's why it's collecting the blood. There has to be no oxygen. It carries the blood, collects the blood, and takes the heart so that the heart, being the pumping organ, it will pump this blood to where we have oxygen. That is the last lungs. That's what you can say about the Nakava. It carries the stated, it carries blood from body, but the lungs. B we have pulmonary failure. Pulmonary vein carry blood. It carry blood from land. Back to the heart. Remember, the blood was taken to the lungs by pulmonary artery to go and take oxygen. No blood after taking oxygen in the lungs, it won't remain in the lungs. The blood will be carried now to the heart so that it will be pumped to various parts of the body. First, it will carry from the lungs to the heart by pulmonary vein. And the type of blood carried here now has got what? Has got oxygen. Very oxygenated blood.
Lastly, you've got the last blood vessel. Blood vessel, to start with, they say you have three arteries, vena cava, and then capillary. Capillary is the last one. Capillaries. We have arteries. Under arteries, you have, for example, artery, aorta, pulmonary artery. Then you have veins, two examples of veins, vena cava, pulmonary veins. Then lastly, you have capillary at the last blood vessel. They are the thinnest. They are very thin. We say arteries are thick, veins are thin. This one are the thinnest. Why are they thin? We are going to discuss that. And again, they join arteries and veins. Just like an ocean, in social study, we do only have one ocean running across the world. But there is a way we call it. When you reach here in Kenya, we call it Indian Ocean. When we go to America, we call it Pacific or Atlantic Ocean, if the name changes. Here also applies the blood vessel. We have only just one vessel. Coming from the heart, we call it artery. When the rich body organs, it divided into small branches. And these small branches what we are calling the capillaries. Out of the organs, flowing back the heart, these small branches join together, collect together to form a one vessel again. And this vessel forms now out of the blood, out of the organ we call the vein. So talk about capillaries, they are very thin. Why are they thin? Because, of, because they help what? Because they help in exchange of material. Things move into the blood through the health capillary and things will move out of the blood by the health capillary. They are very thin. Very thin to allow some process to take through. These are the active transport osmosis and the infusion. These are the process that will explain in form one. Supposed to be next year, but I still have to say next year because you are still in class eight. So you go to form one, your next academic year, talk about the two processes. Taking place here. Things that are needed in the blood, things that are needed in the blood, they get in the blood where they are needed in capillaries. Exchange takes place in capillaries. And things that are not needed in the blood, they are in the blood but they are not needed. They take fuse out of the blood to be taken out of the body by the help of capillaries. Capillaries are very thin to allow the infusion. Remember, materials move out of the blood and into the blood. But the blood does not move out of the vessel. The blood remains intact. Once the blood moves out of the vessel, there's what we bleeding. And bleeding can either be external or inter internal. So that is it, class 8. When we meet again, we shall finish up by looking at the structure of the heart. But before that, I'll have to leave you with some few questions to answer them, to handle them.
That is this class four. Try to go through this question and answer them accordingly. Have a nice day.